So now that I have everything to wrap up my book, I'm back here with Dennis Rude, and he's gonna give me some suggestions on how to turn this into a book. So this is a Coptic binding structure. Historically, the uh, Coptic binding is among the earliest in the Western canon of book binding structures. Okay. It's really relatively simple, mostly sewing all the pages, which are groups of folded sheets of paper, and sewing them onto wooden boards at the beginning and end of the book through holes that are drilled in wooden boards. In the earliest evolution of uh, Western bookbinding tradition is Coptic binding. And uh, from that grew other traditions through the medieval era of raised bands and finally back to unsupported sewing, more or less along the lines of Coptic binding, yes. So you're recommending the Coptic method for binding my book then? Yeah, I think that would be great, Andy. I think that would be the perfect thing. Okay, could you show me how to do it? Well, sure, I'll do what I can to help you get started on the project, All absolutely. Right. Great. Okay, this would be a good way to make a Coptic binding. Simple uh, structure that you could uh, do with your deerskin, Andy. The nice crease with the folder. I can use this cradle to help punch holes. One there, one there. We might use two lengths of thread and four needles. So then I have a uh, a master, as it were, with, this, with the holes where I want it to be, and I could punch holes in the other parts to register the punching of the sewing holes. Register, and you see you've got your whole pile of signatures ready to go in this kind of way. Put one at the edge of the table and the, the rest of them away, and start by putting your needles into the two holes, and even them out like that. It's quite simply, you go in one hole and out the other with one needle, likewise with the other needle, in the hole and out the other hole. So you end up with a double length of thread in the fold. After you've done as many signatures or sections of paper that you want, put the second board on. Now in order to tie a knot in there, you take one of these threads, go around and go in this loop that you have right there, and just go like that and go back in the board and cut that off inside that fold. Likewise for this one, and then go back into the board and then that way there, the whole thing is held together. It's rather simple and elegant, functions very well, opens out flat, very strong, the Coptic binding structure. Have at it, Andy. All right, well, thanks for showing me everything I need. I think I, think I know how to make my book now. Fantastic. After Dennis's demonstration, I went to get my final book together. I decided to reuse some of my leftover leather I had previously made for the belt of my suit. While well, it ended up being a bit stiff for my belt, it should actually work pretty good for my book cover. The first step was cutting all the materials to the matching sizes for both the parchment, cotton, and hemp papers I made, and then assembling them into stacks called signatures. Then I started binding them together in the Coptic method Dennis taught me. From attempting to make papyrus, to making parchment from deer hide, as well as more modern methods of making paper from cotton and hemp, I've now gone through over 5,000 years of history in order to make this book. Well. Let's see how these writing utensils work on this paper. All right, let's start with the pencil. Not a very fine tip pencil, but I think it worked pretty good. Let's try the brush next, but first, let's open up the ink. <coughs> so that smells like rotten deer carcass, which makes sense because that's basically what it is. So, <coughs> wow. All right, got the brush. Let's do a few strokes. I think the brush worked well. The ink looks very, very thin. It's uh, not very thick. It's also very chunky, but I think it worked. We'll see, it might just dry invisible and not be a very effective ink. The brush, however, is probably not the best for writing a manuscript because of the broad strokes. Let's try something a little bit more precise with the quill. All right, so the quill seems to be pretty effective for writing, but the ink is kind of disappointing. It's very light, very runny, and uh, who knows what'll actually show up once it dries. So while all my materials didn't exactly turn out ideal, I did end up being able to make a book. And because I was able to reuse a lot of the different materials from past projects in this book, this ended up being a lot more reasonable price. So, in the end, I was able to make this book for $400.